Crusader very close to going down it's here. Very close. These Aussies eat it too. Oh, but Crus the two pounder. Hey everyone, welcome back. Got a fun 1v1 for you today on the recently recreated map Famineville Approach. Playing as the Brits, we have Grunt out of the USA, ranked number 42 in 1v1. And then playing as the Wehrmacht, we have Alpenwell coming from Germany, ranked number 61 uh, with his faction. Casting with me is Garrett from the channel Turtle War. Really fun post-match discussion uh, with this one. So please chime in with, with your thoughts and your analysis in the comments. Uh, as always, links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll under the video. I'm here with, uh, with Garrett. Garrett, how are you doing today, man? Doing great, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. Yeah, is it? We've had some good matches, good replays, and uh, looking forward to this one. Um, for those who are who are watching, uh, we've got Alpenwell on the east side of the map right now. I've obviously I rotated the camera, uh, playing as a Wehrmacht, and then you've got Grunt. Uh, I'm sorry, Grunt's on the east side of the map, on the top, and Alpenwell's on the west. Uh, Grunt's immediately locked in the Aussies. You got a first squad of kangaroos out. Uh, Alpenwell's got a Kettenkrod already capping up, um, and then he's got his first squad of Grenadiers on the way. So I I'm interested to see how the Grenadiers deal with the, the Aussies, especially the, the slightly buffed Aussie Light Infantry after that, that uh, hotfix. Yeah, they seem to be doing a lot more damage recently. I, I was one of the, the the crowd saying that they need to be used only as scouts, but now they're they're a little they're doing a lot more damage up close now after that after that hotfix. Yeah. Um, and the Grens are, are pretty tough, uh, too. The, all the Axis infantry feels very durable to me. Um, at least when I'm playing as the Allies, right? And then when I'm playing as the Axis, they all just wilt. Oh, this Krod is actually in trouble with these Sappers. Uh, it's going to back out of there. Those SMGs do a shocking amount of damage at range. You would think the penetration would drop off, but it really doesn't, which is interesting. I've caught many... Uh, aggressive Kenton Crads with a with the Royal Engineer squad. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll tear it apart. And here in the center, so you're seeing the change to the sandbag construction time. The Grens get a couple up, but it used to be two sandbags was about the same as like a medium uh, point cap time. Now uh, two sandbags, and you're you've capped the point, and you're waiting a little bit for a construction to finish. Uh, second squad of kangaroos out for Grunt. And the Ketten Crowd is going to try to capture. There's a Vickers now here, though, and if he's not careful. Oh, fortunately, the Vickers targets the Grenadiers. Uh, so the Ketten Crowd is able to get away again. Right now, both players kind of uh, capping right up to the midpoint. A couple minor engagements, but good use of the soft retreat to avoid, avoid kind of like a decisive uh, battle up front. Grenadiers engaging at range to avoid the Vickers. Yeah, they're both just poking and prodding, seeing what they can find early on. Yeah, and and good use of the Ketten, right? Working around the outside, trying to continue to apply some cap and pressure. We also got a Sangar wall built on the middle VP. Interesting location for it. Um, all the way in the back there. I think, you know, maybe putting it towards the front end, right? With the barbed wire to prevent the use of the cover. Um... But yeah, either way, that it'll work. Shut off that that front side that could have shut off his uh, because Alpenwell already built those sandbags as you pointed out on that side. He could have built it right in front of that and shut it off. Well, it looks like Grunt is going to set up a defensive position here with the Vickers and the two Kangaroos. Uh, Alpenwell is going to use these Grenadiers to force off the Sappers, and he's doing a really good job capping around the sides. Uh, and it looks like Grunt's going to try to set up here in the center. So already we see them kind of dividing the map. Mortar out for Alpenwell, which would be a good counter to this machine gun. Now, the machine gun sliding over to support uh, the Aussies in their push. The mortar barrage, but the squad's no longer there. Now the Vickers going to set up in the back. It's interesting. The the Aussies are in that building, but the line of sight is blocked to that closest Grenadier squad, so they're focusing fire on that other one. Oh yeah, and now they're coming on on retreat here. They're gonna focus oh, down this Gren squad. MG yeah, that MG42. Oh, they get around the sight blocker just in time. And instead, they're gonna focus here on these pioneers. I see he's got an infantry section out. I imagine that's for some AT firepower general utility. 
Vicker is doing work on the Grenadier squad in the building. MG42 is going to come up to apply some pressure. Oh man, and it's whittling down the Vicker. Yeah, it's going to have to retreat. Grunt's investing heavily in T1. He hasn't even, I don't think he's, yeah, he's at, he's at about 80 fuel. I don't think he's done any upgrades yet. Any, no grenades, no nothing. He's taken back uh, the north side of the map here, uh, mass capping. You know, he's got his sappers trying to force off the crod, uh, which, which already has some veterans to either from taking damage or it set off a mine somewhere. Um, and it looks like Applewell is going for the, the tier one uh, officer's quarters because all of his units now have uh, one star veterancy. Hmm. All right, These first. are very similar uh, builds. They're, they're oh, almost no. near. Oh, no. <laughs> the mortar right after it laid the mine and the crowd goes down. I just happen to be watching it. Oh, that's unfortunate. Terrible luck. <laughs> that's the worst. So MG42 is the central three... building. Three mainline infantry's out, one MG, one mortar. Another right grenadier coming. Yeah. Oh, grenade onto the Vickers. This is going to hurt. It takes two of the models with it, but the grenadier's forced to retreat. Mortars barraging each other at the moment. The MG 42 in the middle is getting flanked, but he's focusing on pushing that uh, mortar rather than the MG in the building. Well, one more round and this uh, British mortar is done, but it, it's going to be saved. That's going to its teeth. Yeah, the infantry section flank actually does a really good job of forcing a full retreat by Alpenwell here. And it looks like Grunt is going to regain some map control. Although, you know, he's relying on infantry for capping power and doesn't have a Ketan Crawl equivalent. Building his com platoon command post right now, so you should start to see some light vehicles come out. No significant AT on the field for either side, even though the Grens have phenomenal snares now with the buffs. What do you what do you think of the return to the Co two, kind of snare, um, not meta but the functionality I guess. I like it. I mean, it it sucks at first because we weren't used to it. Uh, you could get away with, you know, being a little bit more aggressive with light vehicles, but now you you definitely have to be more careful, especially if your allies going against Vermont because yeah, that range on the Panzerfaust is, uh, it's pretty pretty far. Yeah. It, it is. It's nuts, and I, it can be really frustrating. Um, Grunt hitting a couple of mines here in the center as he goes to uh, support his sappers on the south side of the map. Uh, I know it can be frustrating, right? Because like you said, if you're used to vehicles being able to dodge the snare by getting out of range uh, before the snare actually launches, now that that's not a thing, um, it does make infantry play much more viable and rewards you for using units like infantry sections and grenadiers and rifles that have that utility. Oh, these yeah, and it, it's had some, I don't know if it was the intended side effects, but some units are now, I'm seeing way less like Jaeger Shreks, because uh, Grenadier can almost do the same thing now. Yeah. With with their upgraded uh, false. Yeah, with the snares. Good use of the smoke there to allow that uh, Aussie section to cap and get away. Um, it was really outgunned by these Grenadiers. Oh man, the Grenadier medkit. Uh, Healing in the smoke at yeah, 200 IQ. Yeah. Our sector. Oh, but he's mortaring in the smoke, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> These players are too smart for that. Mine going down on the main, main avenue of approach there. Oh, good use of the Vickers. The Grin's not going to drop that many models because of that healing. Oh, here's the 8-rod coming out from the mechanized battle group. Um, and this is going to do a lot of damage to these Aussies on retreat. You see the 2-pounder AT gun coming out in response. On the side, Gren's squaring uh, up with the Vickers. Meanwhile, MG's getting grenaded. Yeah. Multiple engagements here, and that's uh, a really good time to throw a grenade is when you think your opponent is occupied elsewhere. Oh, this 8-rod is going to eat a couple of rounds from this 2-pounder. Oh, but not with the smoke. Sappers force off MG-42 and almost clear it. 8-rod's getting dangerously close to that mine. Uh, he goes oh, he right around it. it. I wonder if he saw it or if he, he just... Uh, six cents. Yeah. Oh, he's not going to get the mortar, and now these sappers are in trouble. Even with the two pounder coming up. Well, he's not going to be able to dive. Look at that grunt using the mortar to capture. Oh, the boys' AT rifle's coming up to take a couple shots, and this could be 
dangerous setup, but I think Uppenwell sees it and backs out just in time. A second eight rod. And so he's really oh, doubling man. down on this anti-infantry uh, vehicle play. Boy, he's gonna get shot here. Oh yeah. Ooh, he needs oh, to get out of there. Yeah, the the rate of fire on that two pounder is nasty. Uh, he's, he might need to get another pioneer out. He's using it to cap on the north side of the map right now. Both teams or both players contesting the other player's fuel, primary fuel. So, uh, really evenly split match so far. Really even on VPs. Pretty even on KD. Uh, yeah. Grunt was forced uh, to retreat his mortar. It's being counter mortared. Oh, this grenadier squad on the side at in danger. Oh, one model left, but I think it's out of range. And they get away. Both eight you know, rods I, really damaged. I, I, <laughs> say in that situation, he should have used that sharpshooter ability, but I don't think it does uh, max damage on uh, retreat units. So it's tough because you'd, you'd think it would, but I've made that mistake many times too of using that sharpshooter ability, the 35 munitions, and it doesn't insta kill the unit. It's, yeah, it's not like the incendiary round from the Co2 sniper, right? The like the follow up instant kill. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it, it's a cool ability, but it really takes you, you have to get to vet three with the squad for it to really count. Yeah, that's when they start, they start churning out kills at that point. All right, Grunt finally teching up grenades. I say finally. Uh, he's got 150 fuel, so uh, that wasn't holding him back for sure. Uh, half track coming out. Oh, for the repairs. This is really smart. So all he's got to do is keep the half track near the eight rods. It'll keep him topped up, and then he can get make it a stumble or make it a med half track. This is really helpful for field presence. We're gonna have our next engagement over here. Grenadiers pushing on the infantry section. Now that he's got two boys rifle sections. Yeah, Grunt is now investing heavily in this light, uh, light vehicle counters. Yeah, so light AT to counter the, the double eight rod makes a lot of sense to me. Has he seen the second eight rod yet? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, and there's the infantry training for Grunt. You just saw all of his infantry squads uh, get a up veteran upgrade. Oh, now the sharpshooter ability. Doing some damage to these Grenadier squads getting whittled down here. Bringing in the MG42, but those Grens need to retreat. These Grens are close. Yeah, if they're not, sh if they're <laughs> unlucky, they're going to get caught. Back. He's got a separate engagement that he's microwing over here at the eight rods, forcing off the uh, sappers. But he does, does retreat the Grens and gets them out. MG42 in the building is going to continue to get whittled down by the mortar. Two pounder rotated, taking these uh, eight, eight reds head on. Yeah. At least they're able to stay out of snare range. And they still narrowly they missed that mine. I don't know if you saw that. The eight red got very close to it again. <laughs> yeah. Now this MG42 on the north side of the map might go down. It's, it looks like it's stuck in a retreat loop. That's not something you like to see. Uh, boys rifles coming over to support the Vickers. Eight rods are just going to do some damage and then back up, which is smart. Oh, if they don't, they didn't back up enough. There's the boys third rifles don't see eight it. Rad on the field is pushing an Aussie squad that was being a little aggressive, trying to cap the cutoff. Oh man, that's a lot of anti-infantry power, uh, with very little anti-vehicle for Alpenwell, and I'm I'm worried, because for me, when the Brits they get out something like a Matilda. Um, or, you know, God forbid, a grant. This is going to start to look very, very difficult. And he goes with the med half track because it still heals the vehicles. This is a really, really good sim, uh, kind of a symbiotic relationship here. Oh no, this eight rod is going to go oh down if it doesn't. It pops, yep, pops the smoke. Trying to finish off the one infantry section. Oh, and he's going to lose this oh, eight rod for it. One. Yeah. He might lose two. Oh, and he's pulling back. Yeah. He is going to clear this uh, two pounder, though. If he picks that up, that's really, really. Yeah. 
Now this is dangerous because now he's going to have the best anti-vehicle counter that, that Grunt has on his own side. And with the med half track, he can just pick it right back up. Aussies are going to come back out and try to challenge this with the med half track. I think he's he's relatively safe. Oh, and the two Grenadier squad, three in support, doing some healing. Yeah, Grunt's going to have to back up and figure this one out. We have 300 points remaining. Well, the first tank coming out for Grunt. Looks like it's going to be a Crusader. The boys get a shot off. Yeah, and oh, just a little slow, probably because the other vehicle there blocking the pathing. Two pounders in a good spot to support. And these grenadiers are going to get burned down by the Aussies. Oh, and they go down. Target ability, it, it slowed him down and it made it soaked up all that damage. Oh, this eight rod's done. Oh no, he's he's gonna get back, and now the Crusader is snared um, with engine crit. But there's nothing to pursue, and the two pounder getting attacked by the Aussies. Another eight rod out. Oh my god. Oh, the Grenadiers just gonna get away. Just trying to support the two pounder. The boys AT rifle is going to come back up. Aussies are great against those team weapons. And right now, really both players forced into this engagement in the center, throwing everything they have in. Very little capping happened on the side. Just uh, Alpenwell. Grunt trying to repair his tank there. I don't know if Alpenwell knows it's set up on his flank. I feel like if he knew that tank was there, he would push it. You know, all this time has passed, and, and Grunt has just been bleeding manpower. I mean, if he pulled back a little bit and tried to get on another two-pounder or six-pounder, he could be firing on all these eight rads and the, even the med truck. I, I need, You need to get that out of here first. Yeah. And, and so a two-pounder is only 220 manpower. And considering all you've seen have been light vehicles, and you can get your own tanks out, I feel like a couple of two-pounders be a really easy answer here. Vickers in the back to contest these uh, Grenadiers, but they're able to get the green cover. Now here's the Crusader on the flank, the deep flank, uh, but it's he's not going to attack just yet. He might be wary of mines. He's, he's ran into a few already. Some grenades exchanged. Grenadiers oh, and, nice and Aussies. Grenade. Oh, these boys' rifles. Oh, and they just get out of there. Now's the time for the Crusader push. And here it is on the flank, hoping to grab up this 8-rod. Oh, the first shot misses. Brutal. Yeah. Second A shot second misses. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible uh, he, RNG. He must have the same tank drivers I get. <laughs> oh, man. The Crusader's going to back up and wait for his, uh, his wingman. Meanwhile, another small engagement on the side, but the sappers of the flamethrower are going to push off the Pios. And it looks okay. like Alpenwell is set up to secure the center here. Yeah, these eight rods using the, the light vehicle repair and the half track, really sharp. Um, what, what do you think is the next move? For, obviously, he's getting an AT gun out. What do you think is the next move for Alpenwell here from a tech perspective? I mean, this is great. He's got now uh, four eight rods total. Maybe like five. <laughs> I don't even know what he's what he's going for here. Uh, I mean, I would get out. You, you're going to need something to combat uh, the eventual grants. Or you know he's Aussie, so they could also get archers out. And those things could annihilate those eight rats. So, yeah, you're going to need something long range. I don't know what he's planning for, though. Well, the Grenadier is showing their strength in this last engagement. Get another engine crit on the Crusader. Oh man, and the MG42, it was sitting by itself in a building. It was I think it was I think Aussie. it was bugged cuz I saw that before. It was it was on retreat and stuck in the building. Oh, it's it still was there. I didn't even realize it still was there. I thought yeah. it had gone out. And here we go, the double snare coming in. Yep, an engine crit on the Crusader. Um, and a Pack 38 in the rear set up 
but it's too far oh, away to get a shot off. He's trying to push up with both of them. You know, Grunt has done a phenomenal job keeping the VP pressure on. And so looking at it now, 414 to 129, um, you know, Grunt, despite not, you know, overwhelmingly winning engagements, is doing enough uh, to keep the pressure on Alphamal. Oh, a two-pounder gets another shot here on this Crusader. But it, oh, it must not be able to see it. There it is. Crusader very close to going down That's here. Very close. These Aussies eat it too. Oh, but Crus the two pounder. And the range, the range. on that thing. <laughs> and the Vickers goes down to Grenadier Grenade. Oh, this half track is done with these boys AT rifles. And this other eight rod looks like they're going to. So yep, they're going to retreat here. That one eight rod escapes by the skin of his teeth. That's a brutal exchange. Yeah. Um, oh man, not worth it for Grunt there. Um, that man losing that two pounder started to really started to swing the game uh, in Alphenwell's favor. And it's just the combination of the double of the the Grenadiers with their Foss, and then now two AT guns. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just that Crusader was dead in the water. Yeah. We're setting up here, neat. You know. Grunt's army is really whittled down. Um, he's got the VP advantage, but he needs to get some field presence out. And another half track out here for uh, medic and repairs to the vehicles. Um, so yeah, I think Grunt at this point probably think he needs to bide some time. Um, use his VP advantage to rebuild and, and try to inflict some losses on Alphamwell. Alphamal is consolidating, he's got his second VP back, and now he's slowly moving back into the middle. And he's just unlocked the Panther. So I think we know what's coming next for Alphamal, and that's going to be a really good counter to this Crusader. Oh, that MG <laughs> barely gets out of that building alive. Kind of like an asymmetric engagement here as both sides, uh, both players coming in from the side angle. Crusader's Crusader. just eating shots. Oh no. Oh my god. That pack 38. Oh. It does so much damage. He has a Matilda out now, which should do better against the two pounder. Um, pack 38 is still alive to penetrate, but it should be able to, to shrug off some of those two pounder shots. It should really help with fighting off these Grens and with still putting up a fight against these A-Rads, which yeah. are just everywhere. And, and to his credit, he's capped up the fuel uh, on the south side of the map, so he's done a good job maintaining pressure even with some of the recent engagements not going his way. And here comes the Panther on the field, and Grunt is just woefully unprepared. He has nothing that could really put a dent in that. Yeah, I mean, the good news is... <laughs> I guess that he doesn't have that much hit. It's not going to do much infantry damage. Oh man, that infantry section goes down to the eight rods. One eight rod traded out by the Matilda and the boys. And the Matilda shrugs off a couple of AT gun shots, but still very low health. And there is nothing here to push his Panther out. Cool. Nice shot attack round through smoke. Panther is going to pursue in the base. The Grunts can out foot guards to try to deal with it. This other infantry section at the risk of going down to the 8-rod here. The 8-rod's not going to push it. Oh. oh. They're doing a little chase around the circus around the section command And the post. Matilda instead focuses the 8-rod. Oh, goes oh. down to the AT gun. Oh, this is not looking good for Grunt. Oh, and they're, they're beating up his <laughs> buildings with AT guns now. Foot guards on the field, but it might be too little too late here. He could unlock the archer. Um, he has plenty got, of command points. He has yeah. 15 command points. Yeah, he does. Oh, nice. The stun shot on the panther. And it's going to get snared. It's going to take some damage, but not enough for an engine crit. And it bounces some of the bazookas. Another to eight rod back, coming though. out. Buys him a little bit more time. 
The Panther's gonna get chunked down here, but not enough to do any serious damage. And now the Grenadier's coming in. And they're gonna do a lot of work against these foot guards. Yeah, and then every time the foot guard loses a model, they lose that infantry, infantry, anti-infantry power. Yep. Alpha Will's gonna cap up the middle here. Brad is chasing him down. Yeah. It's like what Grunt really needs is manpower to just get out a couple of squads and AT gun, um, and he just doesn't have it. He's been bled too hard for too long. And he's opting for another foot guard. I don't know if that's the right decision here. I, I think you need to get out an archer at this point. You, it's your it's your last salvation. Well, he just un shot. he just unlocked it, so I'm sure he's thinking the same thing. He's got enough fuel. You know, he, so he's basically going to have to wait here uh, for about a minute and a half to, for the manpower for the archer, set it up in the back, and then go for a big push here and hope he can trade out some of these eight rods. <laughs> and the panther just getting repaired by the, the half track. Great use of that ability, um, allowing his pioneers to continuously cap and then top up repairs when they need to. Aussie's on the flank, doing some work to the two pounder. Bazooka's in on the eight rod. It's going to chunk it down, but not, not going to get it. And this infantry section is at risk of going down as well now. Uh, the eight rod pushes it, but it won't. The Aussies can't kill the two pounder fast enough that it won't recrew from the half track. That's unfortunate. Grand is going to push them off as well. And that whole engagement, uh, it looked like Grunt made some progress. In fact, he capped up the south side of the map, but he's still short on manpower and now uh, building out all of his squads. Um, it's just going to take a lot longer for him to get that archer out. Another. A third eight rod on the field. What's that? Is sixth or seventh? Yeah, I. It has to be over seven at this point. This is madness. I mean, is this just the new meta? <laughs> I hope not, because I don't want to face this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a little cheesy, but it works, right? Like you think, what are his other options? Like a a brum bear, a P4. The eight rods are much better at chasing down the squads. But as much as it for the, for the fuel cost, I'm sure. Yeah, it makes it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, and now AT guns on the base perimeter is firing in there. Oh, med tent goes down. This is not looking good for Grunt here. This eight rod might get blocked by its own squad here, but it ducks behind the smoke. Machine gun bunker is getting whittled down. Oh. Yeah, man. And Grunt's doing his best to apply pressure from a cap perspective. He has the VP advantage right now, um, but I don't think it's going to matter. And he's never, his his manpower is just going to keep getting drained. Yep, he'll never get that archer out at this rate. All of his buildings get knocked out, so no more foot guards for him. The enemy has taken a victory point. You know, if he took what troops he had remain and just tried to maybe do a little flank, he maybe could surprise him and get him to pull back. But I think Alpenwell knows this is it. <laughs> Another eight rod. Oh my Panthers finally critted. And one eight rod goes down. This is just a, a base massacre. He's got the triple cap on, which is wild. <laughs> Can he hold on long enough to drain these VPs? Adra is going to chase down these foot guards, and I think they're going to go down. Same with the Aussies. But this is probably it here, even with the triple cap. I don't think I've ever seen an annihilation victory <laughs> with a VP differential like this. No, this is a first. Gotta admire Grunt for hanging in there, <laughs> refusing to quit. 
I mean, he's close. He's very close. Yeah. 30 VPs. But this is it. Pioneer is capping up the side. And so they're going to put a stop to that drain. And that's it. That's the GG. Well, I guess Alpenwell called it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows. Uh, yeah, the platoon command post is about to go down. And I think that's it. That's it. Hey, everyone. Uh, we're back. Not not the ending that uh, that we were expecting. Um, so, as always, I'm going to start with the build order. I understand it's going to be a little wonky, right? And then uh, we'll, we'll discuss uh, the game here. So, uh, for Grunt, right? Aussie, Aussie defense battle group right off the rip. Starts with the sappers. Goes into Aussie light infantry. Eventually gets two squads of them. It's a Vickers HMG out. Then an infantry section. Then a mortar uh, a two-pounder AT gun, another infantry section with the boys' AT rifles, uh, into three Crusaders, and then a Matilda. And then towards the end of the game, he got his uh, his two foot guard sections out. Uh, just weren't enough to to turn the tide. For Alpenwell, uh, picked mechanized um, pretty early on. Uh, so he had his Pioneer, he got his kit and crowd out. Then two Grenadiers, a mortar, an MG42, a third Grenadier squad, uh, and then really leaned into the eight rods. So two eight rods then. A 251 half track for the healing and repairing. Two more eight rods, a pack 38, another half track to replace the one that was lost, uh, and then a Panther. And he ended up building a total of seven eight rods uh, during the course of that game. So, you know, Garrett, we were talking about this, and like, uh, yeah, seven eight rods, pretty, pretty cheesy. So, like, what I want to highlight for everyone here is we don't watch the the replay before we do the cast like i had no idea it was going to go down this way um and i think that's fine like i want to have it be like a natural reaction and the conversations do not feel stilted and and real uh as we're going through and we're trying to see what these players are doing in real time right so it's not premeditated um so really interesting though because uh this isn't something like it, it's pretty cheesy and a lot of the community at least in my experience gets frustrated when you see like one unit used over and over again um but in this case, like, it's pretty effective. And so, Garrett, I'm going to pass it over to you as the resident tactician. Like, what does Grunt do to, to beat this, to answer this? Because I've seen a lot of people talking about the eight rods recently. Yeah, and, it, and it's tough because it's, it's how quickly the game snowballs like this. Like, the first two eight rods, it's like, okay, I understand. You know, he's, he's picking his fights. He's chipping away at Grunt's infantry. But how quickly the game snowballed after that, uh, with all the eight red spam. But it's not like the game was rigged from the start. Grunt could have won, and I, I, I've seen people say this, and I, I agree with this. When it's uh, a broken cheese strat like that, it's not because the game's broken. It's because there's a missing counter, and the counter that was missing here was was AT of some kind. Uh, he did have a two pounder out to Grunt's credit, but he lost that. And then it really snowballed. The boys' rifles aren't an effective counter. They're more of a zoner. You know, they're, they're zoning out those eight rads. But he needed to get something that would hit harder. I, I really think uh, there was not mistakes, but just bad plays where he went for that company command post uh, to get out Crusaders and Foot Guards. I think he should have saved that fuel and maybe got out a couple Archers or even invested some more manpower in AT before he invested more back in crusaders because as we saw he got he just got tore apart with those uh with those crusaders because he got snared and alpenware had two at guns so it was just it was rough yeah uh, so i think you're right so he did a good enough job with the boys at rifles and a couple of the mines early like treating the eight rods and keeping them there they had to kind of repair pretty consistently and they weren't able to dive until late in the game uh, but yeah, the lack of like hard AT and then the Crusader, uh, you know, it's really mobile platform, but it has a lot less armor than most of the other British tanks. And so when you start, like you look at the three Grenadier squads on the field and the two pounder, which will reliably penetrate that, um, uh, it just like, they were never able to get kind of that foothold or, or the utility that you'd expect from a Crusader. Um, and then, you know, investing into three of them, I think the Matilda was the right call, but it came out too late. The Panther had already hit the field. Uh, and then again, no hard AT. And then we were talking about it. Like he clearly wanted to get the archer out. He had the fuel saved up. He invested the, the command points. Um, but getting the foot guards out and then having them 
like throwing them into the breach over and over again, um, they end up bleeding so much manpower that he never actually gets the archer that he needs. Um, and then at that point, it's just kind of game over, especially with the, the two AT guns in the back. Other than that, man, I thought Grunt played a great game. The fact the, that he, yeah, the game was great. Yeah, it was it was even all it was even until it, it just really snowballed. It. And even even once he lost, it didn't really uh, get away from him when he lost that two pounder. He still had uh, he was in it for a while after that. It's just at a certain point, the snowball really got too big for him to handle. Yeah, and it, it's easy for us sitting here like not in it to be like, oh yeah, well just get two more two pounders or you know get a six pounder. But like, yeah when you're trying to manage that and thinking about the amount of micro that he had to do to get his, uh, to get Alvin well down to 30 VPs, uh, by the time the annihilation victory kicked in, like pretty impressive, like map control, especially on the flanks. So, uh, I thought he did a really good job, uh, used everything, like all his units relatively well, obviously had a lot of pressure, uh, put on and then just, uh, lost a couple of engagements the wrong way. And then once you lose those veteran squads, you just, uh, becomes really difficult to recover. Anything else that you, you think uh, the people watching can take away from this? You know, again, I, I think I really think you guys need to. It's easy to say if if you're getting experience in cheese like Bursa spam or eight red spam, you just need to you need to build a counter. And if you try to go around the counter by building, oh, I'm going to get a bulldozer out or I'm going to get a crusader out, like you're not addressing that core problem. And it's that there's a lot of one unit on the field, and you need to, to counter that one unit. Yeah, I think the only other thing that I would say is like, um, like Elo is not perfect, right? If Elo is like the the same for two players, it basically means that both of them have a fifty percent chance of winning. And I think looking in this game, like when you have players that are this good, it's it's the little mistakes that snowball that throw a game one way or the other, right? And so uh, I think there was one engagement about five minutes before the game actually ended where Grunt lost, he lost his third Crusader, um, he lost a couple of his infantry sections, he lost one of his Aussies, and, like, that was really it. Like, you could kind of see that that was a game there. These guys play each other again, maybe it's a different result. Um, and In fact, probably is, right? You know, going in, understanding what the other player's going to want to do. Um, so, like, keeping all that in mind, like, still, really good gameplay, but just kind of a crazy ending in a way that we don't normally see uh, at this level, so... Um, yeah, pretty cool either way. Congrats to Alpenwell. Like, he he really like he figured out what the button was and he just kept pushing it over and over again. The the crouch kick from hell. Um, yeah. Uh, Garrett, you got anything else, man? No, that's all. Just thanks for having me on, dude. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time. All y'all have a great night. Uh, we'll publish this soon and uh, see you in the next one.